Okay, so I always said that I would do a video on how to make the crack cookies. Um, there are no bake oatmeal cookies, but in my house we call them crack cookies uh, because they're addictive and you usually get your first one free. And so here's my video. Uh, the ingredients that you will need. Uh, in the pan I already have one stick of butter and two cups of sugar. And then we have a half cup of milk. There we go. Um, I just use 2% but anything other than skim is fine. You just need liquid and fat content. And then four tablespoons of, I don't know if it'll focus, maybe not, Dutch process high fat cocoa. Uh, really you just need cocoa powder. I used to make it with just like the Hershey's baking stuff that you can buy at the grocery store. This, as you can see, is from a little fancy spice store. It's good stuff. It's not cheap, but whatever you can use, really. Uh, you'll also need a half cup of peanut butter. Um, and you will need teaspoon, half teaspoon, depending, depending on what you use, of uh, vanilla extract. You will need a four quart saucepan. You will need a wooden spoon, wooden please. You will need three cups of quick oats. Do not use the instant ones, those will not do. Uh, I have two things here because this one's almost empty, but you'll need three cups of oats. I also have two large cookie pans, cookie sheets. Uh, mine are 17 by 11 and I can usually fit uh, four across and six down. And I usually fill both cookie sheets. Uh, you'll also need wax paper, not pictured, <laughs> and you'll need two regular spoons. Let's get started then. Right. Okay, so you put your butter and your sugar and then uh, one, two, three, four, ish. As you can see, you don't have to be that specific. More cocoa powder is not bad. Um, and then you'll need your half cup of milk. Put that in there. Turn on your heat. I usually turn it on pretty high. Um, when I used to make it at my mom's house, she has a gas stove that was much nicer. Uh, mine, of course, is just a little electric. Um, I find it helps to break up the butter so that it melts faster. Um, I tried making it with lower heat. Um, but it didn't necessarily do that well. I think it took too long to get to a boil, and so the structure that you want for the sugar, listen at me, like I'm some kind of scientist, the um, structure that you want in the sugar to make it the right consistency, I don't know what that is, but whatever it is, if it takes a long time to boil, you won't get that, that structure. So, that's why I use high heat. Um, as you, I'm not gonna, I don't plan to speed up any parts of this video. It's gonna be about 15 minutes long. So you can see from start to finish, the cookies don't take that long, um, which is why you should really have your ingredients measured and set out before you start. Um, because during this stage right now, you're gonna need to stir continuously. I mean continuously. There is enough sugar in here that if you let it sit for more than like 10 seconds, it's gonna burn. Um, 10 seconds might be an exaggeration, but you get the idea. So you just pretty much stir. Keep stirring. Maybe I'll speed through this part, I don't know.
I don't know if you can see it on there, but I've got my burner right here. I've got that set up at uh, seven and a half, eight. My burner only goes to nine. <laughs> so I've got it pretty high. So, yeah, and you can see it's already starting to boil. Partly because the butter wasn't very cold when I put it in here. Um, but also partly because I put it up very high. So keep stirring. Ideally, you'll want to have the butter melted before you start to boil. Um, that doesn't always happen. I've noticed it's not a huge deal. Um, but like you definitely shouldn't have chunks like this before when you're still when you're getting to the boiling stage I'll show you what I mean by boiling stage part of the key to this recipe I've had a couple people say like they made them but they didn't turn out quite right part of the key is to make a rolling boil and I mean like rolling boil for exactly 60 seconds you have about five seconds maybe on either side before the structure gets weird or doesn't set um, there that's great um, but you really need to get as close to exactly 60 seconds as you possibly can um, as you can see my butter is now significantly smaller and you can see like lighter sort of tendrils. I don't know if you actually can see that. Maybe not. <laughs> um, but there's sort of a lighter shade of brown from where the chocolate is beginning to boil and the butter is beginning to boil and tiny, tiny little air bubbles are forming and so it's a little bit lighter. That's good. You want that. That means you're getting close to the boiling stage. And you can see now that my butter has disappeared. And so you can maybe stir a little bit slower at this point because the action of your stirring is going to prevent it from boiling. Please do not stop stirring. Do not, do not stop stirring. <laughs> but you can maybe stir a little slower. There we go. Good job. I don't know if you can really see this. Not really. There. Okay. Yeah, see, you can see how it's a different color when I dripped up from the bottom because that part isn't isn't as close to boiling. Yeah, like that. Yeah. And I don't think you can hear it on this recording, but um, you can hear when you're making it, you'll be able to hear it start to boil, just like a pot of water where you can hear it start to boil, it'll sound like that. See where it's starting to go dark all on its own, like over in this area? Yep, there you go. If you stop stirring for a second, it'll start boiling. So keep stirring, and it'll start boiling here in a minute. But when it first starts to boil, that's not when you start counting, okay? See how it's boiling now? But you don't start counting until it's a rolling boil. That's 
I think, part of what's going on when people end up doing it wrong. Okay, it's all boiling now. I'm going to put the camera back so I can count properly. Okay. Now, there we go. There we go. Okay. Now we're going to start counting to 60 seconds. A rolling boil, I'll look up the official definition, but a rolling boil is like the fullest boil. It's like the the bubbles that you're getting are large. Um, and as you can see, they, they cover the whole pan. <clears throat> About 45 seconds into it, you should be able to start to smell the sort of rich chocolatey goodness that will bring members of your family into the kitchen to find out what you are doing. <laughs> That's good. That means you're doing it right. All right, we just got about five seconds left. There we go, okay. Turn off your heat. Remove your goods from the heat. And quickly add in the peanut butter. That didn't look very good, did it? Peanut butter. Uh, the recipe calls for one teaspoon of vanilla extract. I can't get my bottle open. There. I'm using double strength extract. Uh, so I'm just going to go for a half teaspoon. And I don't like a lot of vanilla anyway. So, all right, and then you stir it. Here, let me see if I can move this a little closer. Here, uh, that's not really that great, is it? <laughs> um, and then you stir it until there we go until it's totally smooth and combined. This is going to take you a minute because that's a lot of peanut butter to be sticking in this poor little, you know, chocolate sugar syrup concoction. Um, but make sure you've got all the peanut butter dissolved because if you don't, in the next step, you're going to have like peanut butter chunks in your cookies and it's not going to taste that good. I mean, it'll taste okay, I guess. I like peanut butter. <laughs> but that's not what we're going for. Alright. I used to use um, actual vanilla. My grandmother, in her travels, bought a vat, basically, of actual vanilla and divided it amongst some of my uh, aunts and uncles and my mom. And... So I used to use that, and literally it would be just a little drip. It came with an eyedropper, and you used like a drip of it. Um, and that stuff was delicious. But, um, like I said, I've got... The lack of autofocus on this camera, I apologize. Um, double strength extract. This is also from Penzi's, which if you're in the Columbus area, Penzi's is really nice. Okay. There we go. So... It's a little thicker than it used to be. You can see there's still some peanut butter chunks. I mean, like little flakes, but that's because I use cheap peanut butter. Okay. The next step, one cup at a time. The recipe calls for three cups of oats. But if you stick them all in there at once, you will not be able to stir it. So add in one cup. Make sure they are thoroughly coated. Oops. Okay. 
and then add your next cup. As you can see, I'm not very specific about the cups. Um, in my experience, you could probably put three and a quarter, even maybe three and a half cups in there and still have plenty to coat it with. Um, but three is what it says. This is why I bought two of them. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So that's the third cup of oats. By this point, it's going to be a little hard to stir. You can't go all fast because you're going to get oats everywhere. Um, and the reason you buy quick oats and not instant oats is because if you had bought instant oats, you'd be cooking them right now and they would be cooked by now and it would be a sloppy mess. So you buy quick oats, which are still quick to cook. They're still cooked, but they're not like sloppy messes. There we go. Okay. This goes up here. This goes in the trash. And this oops, goes up here. Okay. Let me adjust the camera. sheets, wax paper, the goods. You also need two regular spoons. Lay out the sheet of wax paper. Obviously that one was a little big. Scoop out, place on paper, wash, rinse, repeat. I put the four corners down first because that helps to keep the paper steady. Um, you can also use uh, parchment paper if you like that instead of wax paper, it doesn't really matter. Excuse me, I'm going to try not to cough all over these cookies. At this stage, you can make them as big or as small as you want. Um, if I'm making them just for my family, I tend to make them quite large. Uh, but when I'm making them for work, I tend to make them a little bit smaller. Uh, just because I want to make sure that everybody gets a cookie. We got a lot of people on the floor and, you know, some people get cookies and some people don't. I don't want it to be like a moment. Um, if you've done it right, by the time you're done with the first cookie sheet, you should be noticing that the, I mean, I don't know what to call it, the batter of the mixture is starting to firm up already. Uh, I mean, you see how it's sort of sticking to itself on the spoon. That's a good sign. So then you take your goods. Oh. 
and you stick them in the fridge. If you're lucky enough, unlike me, you'll have a fridge that you can fit two cookie sheets on, the bottom rack. Um, we'll save this for later. But if you're unlucky, and you have the world's tiniest apartment fridge, um, you know, you'll just have to rearrange things and work it out. What's that, uh, Tim Gunn, make it work? Yes? You can do that. Alright. Um, as you see, I'm working pretty quickly, but... Excuse me. And of course, I've made these cookies like a hundred billion times. <laughs> um, every time I make them at work, somebody asks me, What's the recipe? What's the recipe? Um, I am not a chef. I do not cook things. Um, <laughs> my most common dinner, I think, is like pizza. Uh, yes, for those of you interested, I do live by myself. <laughs> I'm not, you know, my brother, who actually is quite good at it, uh, shakes his head whenever he he, he hears of my dinner. Um, but this is the one recipe that I have memorized, and I have it down cold. <laughs> um, I just love these cookies. They're so good. Um, obviously those of you who are allergic to peanuts are not going to be so keen on these. Um, I don't personally know anyone who's allergic to peanuts, so I don't, um, I don't know if there's anything you can substitute. Um, also I don't know about gluten content. I assume oatmeal contains gluten, but I only know one lady who's allergic to gluten, and I've never made cookies for her, so maybe there's something that can be done there, but uh, and of course if you're diabetic, these are pretty much out of luck for you, because two cups of sugar is not a happy diabetic make. So whoops, ooh, that was close two cookie sheets of 24 cookies each um this says that this video is approaching 25 minutes long. Um, so you put it in the ov in the fridge and you wait as long as you possibly can <laughs> before your family rages, raids the fridge and eats them all. Um, generally about two hours. Um, I usually make them the night before as I'm doing now and then I pack them up and, and, uh, and bring them to work the next day. So there they are. If you have any questions, uh, you know, make some comments or, or Twitter me. I'm Meredith, uh, M-E-R-E-D-E-T-H, on the Twitters. And uh, yeah, go and try and make some cookies. Um, maybe they won't work out the first few times, but you'll have delicious mistakes. <laughs>